Hello there planner friends. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining again and if you're new here, welcome. Um, on my channel we talk about all things planners and stationery and uh, the occasional adventure with my family thrown in just for fun. So today's video comes from uh, something that I asked about on my Instagram and that was whether or not you guys would be interested in seeing my work bullet journals and how I handle my planning for work because I do keep my work and personal separate. So um, right now my personal planning is in a personal size uh, Moterm. I've been bouncing back and forth between covers. This one is the one that I'm using right now this week. Of course that could change at any minute. Um, I change my planner covers kind of like some people change their clothes. So it's pretty frequent, sometimes daily, sometimes multiple times a day, depending on the mood. Anyway, not talking about the, the ring planners right now. What we're going to talk about are, um, are these guys. Th this is the stack of bullet journals that um, I've been working through using. Um, this one, I think it's the, well, this is the first one I found. And this one starts in, let's see, 2015. So this is my very first one. And I thought I would just show you kind of the evolution not a whole lot has changed over the years, but a little bit has changed. But I, I kind of have a style that works and I kind of stick with this, this style. Um, I don't have handy, I couldn't find, but the way I started out planning this way for work was probably 15 or 16 years ago when I first started working in the role that I had um, at the time, uh, a mentor of mine, was uh, kind enough as she was teaching me the job to talk to me about the best way to, to keep track of the projects we were managing and the teams we were responsible for tracking and all of that. And, and at the time it wasn't called bullet journaling, that wasn't a thing, but that's basically what we were doing. And um, it's just kind of evolved from that several 15, 20 years ago to what I'm doing now, which um, is some modification of, uh, of what is now known as bullet journaling. So anyway, without showing you things that are private and um, confidential in terms of work-related stuff, because I do work in a product management role, so part of my job is working on products before they come to market, on uh, marketing and go-to-market initiatives, new product innovation, that kind of stuff. So I can't really show you things that we're working on right now because that would breach confidentiality. But I can show you stuff from years ago. And since my style is relatively the same, then I thought that would be the easiest way to walk through this. I may blur things out um, and, and that's just to protect the confidentiality of things, but I think you can get the general gist of things. So as you can see, just from the stack that, that I've got here, um, there's been an evolution in the books and the, the notebooks I've used over the years, um, even if there hasn't been a significant evolution in the planning or tracking that I do in terms of my job. So I started out with a uh, moleskin um, and, and this was great because I had, I, I still have it, but I had a, a leather, um, woven leather cover that was a little bit smaller than A5 size and this moleskin would fit perfectly, slide in there and I could travel um, and it would, it would show, it would store nicely for traveling and then when I was at home I could just have this out and have this on my desk, you know, and it would lay flat and there was no problem. So. That was, um, that was what I started with. Before this, when I was talking about my mentor teaching me, I just used to use a spiral notebook. I would just go to Walmart or Target and buy spiral notebooks. And somewhere along the way, I think it was when I started traveling a little bit more for going back and forth to headquarters and things like that. For meetings, I felt like I really needed something a little bit more compact. And I've always loved that uh, notebook cover that I had. And so this was a perfect solution. And it looked, you know, professional other than my little decoration. Um, but the, the, the leather cover itself looked professional for meetings and things at headquarters. So this is the first one. This one started, like I said, in 2015. It goes from July 2015 to March of 2016. Then I moved, um, I don't know where, the 2016 to 2017 one is it's somewhere um but i think it i don't even know 
I don't know where it is, but it's somewhere. And then at some point I moved into these, which this is from, let's see if I can find it. I may not. Um, Taroko Designs. Um, so this was, um, just pull that out. This was Taroko Shop, Taroko Designs. So I love these. They're um, really nice quality notebooks and really, really liked the, um, the quality, I liked the fact that it was thicker because I would go through, you know, one of these pretty quickly because, you know, they're not as, as, as thick. And um, this one lasted me about a year, a little less than a year. This one lasted me um, from April of 2017 to August of 2018. And you'll see, I'll show you a little bit of this one. This one is literally page, I, I don't think there were any pages that I didn't use in here. And again, this fit into um, this cover, which is actually a Hobonichi cover that I got secondhand and absolutely love it. It's um, one of the TS leather um, ones. It has the pocket on the back here, it has pockets in the front here. And um, again, this looked really nice going back and forth to headquarters and I really liked it and um, used it a lot. So then the next one was November 2018 to April of 2020. From August to November, I don't know what I did. Um, because that was a long time ago. Yeah, this is literally to the end of August. I'm sure I used something, but that was probably when I was trying to do like uh, combining work and personal and doing it in a uh, Hobonichi or something like that, which is probably why it didn't last very long and I went back into this. So I'll flip through these a little bit and show you what I, how I, how I use those. This is another one that I started. Um, I think this one was, yeah, June. So this was probably 2020. Um, and, and this one I actually moved away from using in the, uh, in the August and September timeframe, 2021, 2020. Yeah. Cause then I picked it back up in 2021 to try to start it and didn't stick with it. And that's because I moved into this. This is a notebook that I picked up, um, in January of 2021. And I remember because I got one for myself and for my mom at the same time. And it was right after my stepdad passed away. And um, she was actually using hers kind of like a bullet journal, although we didn't call it that at the time. And this notebook I really liked. It has uh, in the front, um, it has uh, a calendar that I could use, which I liked. And then I love the way the pages were. Let me just flip to a blank page back here and show you the pages where it's got topic, date, and then like a checklist column. And the paper was really, really, it is really, really nice quality. And that was part of what I liked about it. Um, I liked the fact that it was spiral and I could flip it back on itself. That's the only complaint I had about these is because they are, um, it's A5, but because of the, the nature of the book, you know, it, it, you always had a little bit of a bump unless you broke the spine some and it took up a lot more space on my desk horizontally than this notebook did. So I moved into this. I was in this for um, the, from the beginning of 2021 all the way through, goodness, September. So this lasted me from January to September of 2021. I had another one, which I can't put my hands on right now, but it was pink and I used it for part of 2022. Um, and then when I finished it up, I was debating on what to use. And I had this Erin Condren notebook and it's, and it's actually a combination of um, a notebook that I already had and some other note paper from other Erin Condren um, like a monthly planner that the months were no longer useful and it's this uh, pr productivity layout so this is what i'm currently using i'll show you a little bit of it but i probably won't show you much of it just because it is current projects and i don't want to betray any corporate confidence um, but this is the the notebook that i'm currently using for work i really like it if I were traveling, um, this would be too much and I probably wouldn't want to carry it because it is bulkier and bigger. But because right now I'm not traveling at all, this size is fine. And because it's spiral, I can flip it back and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So I'll talk a little bit about how I'm using this as well. This was a, an experiment that I used for maybe a month or so. This is a Hobonichi Day Free 
that I used and the thought I had here was that I was going to use my monthly pages to show product releases, um, promotional dates, things like that. And then, you know, use my, use this because I didn't really need a calendar, use this for notes. But what I found was two things. One, it took up a lot more real estate on my desk, which annoyed me after being spoiled with spiral notebooks. And two, um, the Tomoe River paper is finicky, as you know, if you've used it before. And in a work situation, I just didn't have the time or the patience for Tomoe River paper. I like to highlight things. I like to use colored markers and pens to draw attention to things. And, and this finicky paper was frustrating. So this one didn't last very long, um, but maybe I'll use it for something else in the future. I just don't know what right now. So let me talk a little bit about my planning style. Let me pull out some of these older ones and just talk a little bit about my planning style and, and what I do bullet journaling um, with with my work set up. So like I said, this was the first one that I found, the oldest one that I found. And what I do now is not a whole lot different than what I did back then. So one of the things that I do is in all of my notebooks, I either print out a free calendar or if it has one in it already, I make use of that most of the time because of the type of notebook I'm using. It doesn't have a calendar. So I'll just print out a, a free calendar and I tape it in the front and um, I use that to mark things like uh, travel dates, uh, vacation, um, and any important product launches we have, things like that, so that I have at a glance what, you know, what's coming. And when I'm on meetings and things like that, I always have a calendar. This uh, is just tipped in here. This was just a Project Life um, journaling card that I was using for, for a key. Um, this doesn't well, it's not really a whole lot different than what I do now, um, but I don't draw little boxes for tasks, and I'll show you what I do. But generally speaking, this was the key for what I would do. And then this was color coding, um, but I still use a similar color code in my personal planner, but I don't really have any reason for it here my, or any of my work planners anymore. So you can see this one was 2015, here's 2016, so I tape that in there as well. Um, I did start an index. I don't know that I went all the way through. Yeah, I guess I kind of did because this is 137 and the last page I wrote on was 140. So um, as, if you are familiar with the moleskins, they are not numbered. I did take the time to number, but what I did is I only numbered the odd pages, the fronts. I didn't number the backs because I figured I could figure out what the number was on the other side. So that was my lazy person's way of numbering. And anytime I have a book that I number the pages, that's what I do. Um, but what I, what I did was a lot of uh, post-it notes and meeting notes. And I just, I highlight things you'll see as I move forward. The blue, for me, whenever I use a blue highlighter, this indicates that it, it's complete. If I highlight it through in blue, and that way the things that are not complete jump out at me because they're not highlighted and it's easier for me to find. Um, this is, this is uh, messy planning. This is not anything that's neat and tidy. This is how I do work. It's all about scribbling notes um, in the, the train of thought in a meeting, drawing things out in terms of concepts for products and things like that, and, and just moving on. So the other thing you'll see here is I have orange and let me talk a little bit about that. Let me find a page here in the back where I've got a little bit more of it. So, okay, so you can see here, see how I've circled these things in orange. This is kind of how I started um, identifying things that were tasks or action items in a meeting. So anytime I had an action item, when I was in a meeting, while I was in the meeting, I would just put a little star or asterisk next to the item. And then later on, I would go back and circle it or highlight the star or asterisk. That way, in the midst of all the meeting notes, those things that I had to do jumped out at me. And then when I finished them, I would just check them off. And I still do that to this day. Um, and you can see I started, you know, the same thing here, circling it in orange and, and, and trying to, to 
um, make it quick for me to find. If I finished it, I crossed it off in blue. I'm a little bit less diligent about that nowadays, more than anything, I just check it off just because it's one less pen to have to have on my desk. If I delegate something or somebody else is handling something, then I usually write their name out next to an action item so I know who I need to follow up with. Um, I was using, in this particular book, I was using the color-coded washi tape here to help me in terms of my color coding. Um, and I have it somewhere. I don't know where I have it, but I had it somewhere what those colors were, but this was from 2015. So there's no telling now what they were. Um, here's, you know, just like writing out how we were gonna handle things, drawing things out. It's, it's messy. It's not neat, it's not tidy, it's not Instagram worthy. It's just, you know, keeping track of things. I would also take things that, like this was a PowerPoint where we were working through dates and I just printed it out and stuck it in here. Here's things I wanted to do by the middle of the month. Um, there's more dates, more important tasks. And then if I flip back here, um, here's where, what was I gonna show you? Here's where I was tracking course titles and all the things that had to be done to release those courses, the different things and when they were done and who did them and what date they were complete on. So I knew when all the things had to be done. Here's another one and I highlighted it in green so that I knew it was ready to release. Um, so yeah, this is just how I kept track of, here's another one. This is a master list of things to do. And then this was probably a weekly uh, list of things to do for that week and then here's all the course titles I had to release um, so yeah that's what that's what this notebook was again this was 2015 to 2016 I also used um, where was it I just saw it this like this is just a notepad and I just taped it in um, and this was because a lot of times I'd have the notepad next to me and I'd just be scribbling stuff down and then I'd just tape it in um, so that's that one. And then moving on from there, we'll go into this one, 2017, 2018. You're going to see this isn't a whole lot different. So I started out um, thinking I was going to use this as a personal and work bullet journal. So I had done this, um, this Calendex type of view and then drawn in some months. That didn't last very long because I really just wanted this to be work related. So I didn't even bother drawing out the rest of the months. You can see where I had them, had them flagged but didn't do it. Here's where I was gonna do a personal plan page and, and then I went right into work stuff and never looked back. So one of the other things that I do is I use a color highlighter for an entire month. So in my mind, April is or May, usually one of the two, or, or lavender. Like August is always kind of a gold color because it's what I used to use for the kids' school calendar. And so it's back to school in August here in, in Georgia, and so that's made sense to me. Um, orange is Halloween, October, you know, red or green for Christmas in November, or in December. So you'll see that, that the colors change, and that way it was easy for me to tell at a glance what month I wrote the notes in because I had done the entire month, I would highlight the day of um, that day and everything for that month is in that color. So as you can see, as I'm flipping through, um, there, there's usually, if I have a lot going on, there'll usually be like a to-do list for a week. And, and then here's where I've got things asterisk that need to be done. Um, things that are highlighted in orange. Here's another checklist of things that had to happen and I was making sure that they were, you know, allocating them out. So um, no rhyme or reason to the pen, no rhyme or reason to the other than my mood, to anything other than the color of highlighter for the day and the orange for tasks to, to check them off. So you can see here, I've got, you know, things that had to be done. March is green, St. Patrick's Day, hello. And, um, and then the things that had to be done were in orange. So same kind of format, I didn't really change. It was just a lot of meeting notes and keeping track of um, tasks and things like that. You can see this, 
this was actually a call with my VP. This is usually how, when I would have calls with him, this is usually what my pages would look like because it was just, you know, trying to keep up with his, his um, thoughts as quickly as possible. Here's where we went from 2017 to 18. So I stuck this in here. So I had a calendar at a glance and then here's where I started with January. Um, and that's pretty much how my bullet journaling style is. Here's 2018 to 2020. And you'll see as I just kind of quickly flip through here, this one I didn't finish. This was where I had a lot of stuff going on. So I pulled out another note paper and started writing to-do list. I was in a purple pen kick there. Um, for a while I was doing this where I would mark off part of the page to have to-dos and then have the middle for notes. That got to be a pain just because I didn't always want to take the time. So that didn't last very long. But that's one of the things I like about the Erin Condren notebook is it's already done for me. Um, here's another where I was really busy and I pulled out a to-do list um, from a notepad. Here's where I was on a call away from my desk and I was just scribbling notes on a piece of note paper and then brought it and stuck it in here. Here's more. Um, here's where I taped in an agenda for a meeting that we had. Um, so yeah, here's where I was, you know, we were talking about UI design and how we wanted some things to, to be. And so I was drawing it out as we were talking. It's another one of those. I still have that notepad. I haven't used it up yet. Um, you can see October was orange, right? September was teal. August was kind of an, well, I guess I was using an orange too. Um, and I didn't, it wasn't like a page per day or anything like that. It was just, you know, I draw a line like you can see here. I didn't have a lot going on. Here's Thursday, here's Friday, here's Monday, here's another Monday a week later. Um, so it was just, you know, when I was, when I was busy, I'd take as many pages as I needed. When I wasn't busy, I would um, not bother writing notes and some days are neater than others some days are messy um, then this this is basically the same so I won't even bother flipping through that this one was interesting and this one I may end up having to, to block out some things just because of this being more recent but um, this notebook like I said I really liked if I could find them easily locally, I would probably buy more of them. The last time I looked on Amazon, and you're gonna laugh because I buy, <laughs> because these other notebooks are not that cheap, but these were like $15 a piece. And I was like, I'm not paying $15 for a spiral notebook. And that's why I ended up using the Erin Condren notebook, which I, ironically enough would be, you know, like $18 if I were to buy it right now new, but I already had it on the shelf, which is why I didn't, it didn't, you know, have a problem um, buying it. So. Again, like I said, one of the things I really liked about this notebook is it had this this reference um, with the calendars. And, and again, I was highlighting important days and things like that made it really easy for me. I also liked this where it had the holidays and I could see holidays um, that I needed to be aware of for release dates and things like that. And then as I as I went through, again, same thing. I didn't really change, but the one thing I liked is that I could use this column for my action items and um, color code. And I'll just kind of quickly flip through here. You can see, you know, I went to purple was for May, Mother's Day purple for some reason. Um, and this one I didn't use as much of the highlighter just because I had that pretty, you know, box at the top to make it easy for me. Um, but yeah, that's that was my, I didn't finish, I did finish, yeah, all but a few pages. Um, and just moved on to the next notebook. I had a pink one somewhere that I don't know what I've done with, but a, so I had the purple one and a pink one. I use those. I'll probably go back to using these at some point, maybe when I finish this Erin Condren notebook. It's Carolina Pad is the brand if you want to look um, for them. I, I know Staples has them and um, I've seen them on Amazon. They're a little more expensive on Amazon than at Staples, but like I said, I really, really like these. The paper quality is really nice and I would probably go back to these. The other thing I like is that there's this big back pocket in the back here. Um, and there, this one, is this the one I, 
Let me see. Yeah, th there's supposed to be a pocket in the front here, but this one, when I got it home, I realized the pocket had been broken off. But that's another thing I like about those. Um, and again, this notebook is my Erin Condren that I'm using. And um, it was a monthly calendar and then a notebook that I kind of combined into one. So um, you can see here's the monthly planner title page. I took out of the pink uh, Carolina notebook, I took the calendar out of it and taped it in here because this didn't have a current calendar because the monthly calendar itself was from like 2018 or 19. So I took this out and just taped it in here so that I had the dates um, so I could use it for reference for 22 and 23. And then what I am doing in here, and I'm not going to show you, you know, my my stuff here but what i'm doing i i'll talk about is i you know just the same thing i always do as far as notes meeting notes and things like that but i use this for my action items so if i'm in a meeting and i'm taking notes on this page or this page then at the end of the meeting if there's something that i have written in asterisk next to that is a task that needs to be done then i would go over here and write it in this column and if you saw on my instagram which i'll show you this one because i posted it on instagram so obviously it's probably okay to um let me do it this way nope At the end of the week, I usually sit down on Friday nights and I write out my to-do list for the next week. And I, in, in this case, I have it grouped by the projects that I'm managing so that it's easy for me to see. And um, trying to color code, I don't know whether or not I'll carry this forward beyond this week. It was just a novelty thing. I wanted to see how I liked and we'll see if it becomes a pain or not. But I had these pens that I got, these Zig uh, Color Dot, and I think the... I think they were pastel or smoky or something like that if i can find where i got them on amazon i'll link them but i had these colors and they were pretty and they were new and so i was like oh, i'll color code my uh, task list for the week so that's what i did so anyway that's my that's my plan but back to how i use this i try to use this as a as a running to-do list for the week now if I am, um, obviously, I'm going to use more than one page for a week. So let's say it's Wednesday and I wrote this list on Monday, then, you know, I might be here or I might be here by Wednesday. I don't go back and rewrite these things. I just come back and look at this um, unless I'm like, you know, five or six pages past, which is not usually the case. Um, then I just try to make a point of double checking back to the beginning of the week and looking at the things that may have not been checked off that were complete for that for that task list the other thing that i do that i can't show you because this would obviously be too private but i keep a page where i have my uh, manager my one step up manager um, and my direct reports and so usually i'll dedicate a two-page spread like this to it and so i'll have uh, my VP, my manager, and then my direct reports over here on this page. And I just jot down things that I want to talk to them about when it's time to meet with them um, in my one-on-ones with them during the week or whenever I have time. So that way, if I think of something, I'm in a call or I, I'm on a call with somebody else and they're like, hey, can you talk to so-and-so or can you, you know, find out about this? And I'll say, yeah, I'll check. Then what I'll do is flip to this page and I'll write down, you know, talk to Sally and ask her about blah, blah, blah. And that way, when I have my one on one with that person, I don't have to try to remember all the things that I wanted to talk to them about. I've got a checklist here and um, it helps me to be more efficient with my time and make sure that I'm respectful of their time and covering the things that are important and that I need answers on without having to flip through, you know, a week or two's worth of notes and try to remember what I wanted to talk about. So generally speaking, that's how I do my bullet journaling. I just am, am uh, as in the moment, as things come, writing down my to-dos, writing down my meeting notes, using my um, orange highlighter to highlight all of my tasks as they come up. In this case, in this Erin Condren notebook, making use of this productivity column. And, um, and that's pretty much it. That's my bullet journaling style now. Um, it's, like I said, it's something I've been doing since long before bullet journaling was called bullet journaling. 
but it's basically the same type of, of approach. And as you can see, it doesn't matter what size or what style notebook you use, you can do the same thing. And I think that that's one of the beautiful things about this type of note taking is that it is flexible and it can adapt to your needs. Um, so yeah, that's it. I thought this was going to be a short call, but I'm a short call, a short video, but I think I have rambled way more than I had anticipated. So if you have specific questions about bullet journaling for work or any of the things that you saw here, um, feel free to comment down below. I'm happy to answer your questions or film another video if there's something else that you would like to know. And thanks again for watching. I really appreciate all of you who come and um, participate on my channel. Let me know how you handle your work planning. Do you use a work planner? Do you need a work planner? I don't know that everybody needs a work planner, um, depending on the type of job that they do. And if you do have a work planner, what's your style of planning for work? Do you have to have a calendar or do you just take notes and keep track of tasks? Let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious and interested. And I think like, uh, like me, it's hard for a lot of people to talk about or share what they do for work planning because of the nature of their work. It may be private or confidential. And so they can't really, you know, share publicly. But I'm always curious to know how other people do it because I think we can learn from each other and, um, and maybe perfect our systems as well. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you and happy planning. Bye, everybody.